Penis enlargement pills from Matt Frothick. Well, footballers, it's power rankings time yet again because it's Thursday. However, this week, we've got something a little bit different for you. Now, for those of you who normally watch the show, you'll know that we have a table with the top 10 players from around Europe in club football. However, because there's been an international break over the last few days, we've put together a list of the top 10 players from over the international break. But of course, we're still including some winners and losers. So without any further ado, and without having to look back at last week's table, let's get straight into it. Now, before we start, of course, of course, power rankings as normal will be returning next Thursday because, well, club foot will be returning. And look out for the massive Tottenham versus Liverpool game on Sunday because I'm sure that'll have a big effect on the rankings. But let's put all that aside for the moment and head into our international winners and losers. First off, our loser is Thibaut Courtois. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, you should go and check out Belgium's highlights from their 3-1 victory over Russia. Although the scoreline suggests they did well, Thibaut Courtois did not. He completely dallied on the ball inside his own box, was robbed by the Russian strikers before Denis Cherisev tucked the ball in the back of the net. It's pretty bad form for him this season at the Bernabeu, and this will do his confidence no good. On to our winners of the week, though, and first up, and it's Callum hudson Adoy. The young Englishman made his debut against Czech Republic before making his first international start away at Montenegro. He put in a very mature performance, and surely, surely now, Mauricio Sarri has to give him a starting berth in the Premier League. Our other winner of the week goes to Moyes Keane. The Juventus forward has put in some good performances over the last few weeks, and in his second and third game for the Italian national side, he managed to bag a goal in each. With Cristiano Ronaldo now out injured, could we really be seeing the youngster lead leading the line for Juventus. So into the power rankings, and we start, of course, with number 10, and it's Alexander Zinchenko from Ukraine. Over the international break, he helped his side keep Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal at bay in a nil-nil draw before helping his team to a 2-1 victory over Luxembourg. He put in a very mature performance in the centre of midfield, which is somewhere that he hasn't often been played for Manchester City. However, it's clear to see that Pep Guardiola is helping him massively in his game, and if Benjamin Mendy's injury worries continue, well, they may just have a ready-made left-back in the wings. In at number nine, and it's Granit Xhaka. The Arsenal midfielder has shown increasing maturity this season when he's captain not only his club side, but also Switzerland as well. Now, they did throw away a 3-0 lead to Denmark. However, in that game, Granit Xhaka scored a banging goal and helped control the midfield in their 2-0 victory a few days before that. It's been a fantastic international break for him personally. In at number eight, and it's Olivier Giroud, officially the third highest scoring Frenchman of all time. Both of his goals over the international break saw him overtake David Trezeguet, and he now has 35 goals in the French colours. This is only 17 away from breaking the record that Thierry Henry holds with 51. Surely, surely he's done enough to warrant a starting place in Maurizio Sarri's side for Chelsea, because at the moment it looks like he just does not get a good enough run of games, despite still having good quality. Let's face it, Gonzalo Higuain is doing absolutely nothing, so Giroud might as well start. And talking of Chelsea, it's one of Giroud's teammates, Ross Barkley, who's in at number seven. After coming on for the injured Eric Dyer in England's first game against the Czech Republic, he managed to grab an assist. And in the second game against Montenegro, he took the game by the scruff of the net, got an assist and added two goals to his tally. And surely he'll be a starter for England come the Euro Nations League finals in the summer. In at number six, how we continue the Chelsea trend because it's Aiden Hazard, who over the last two games earned his 100th cap for Belgium. Within those games, he scored three goals and managed to take his international tally to 30 goals and 26 assists within the 100 and won games. This is pretty good going for someone who's only 28 years old. So with plenty of years left in the tank, he could go on to be one of the greatest Belgian players ever. Number five now, and it's Memphis Depay. His performance over the international break would have definitely caught the eye of many of Europe's top clubs. That's if his club form with Lyon hadn't already done that for him. He put Belarus to the sword with two goals, and even though Netherlands ended up losing to Germany, he did excel in that match with an assist and a goal, meaning that he grabbed the headlines for all the right reasons. Next up is the second of three French players on this list, and it's Antoine Griezmann, who got a goal and an assist in both games against Moldova and Iceland for France. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, he's only scored against the poorer sides. Well, of course. What else is he supposed to do? The big teams can't play each other week in, week out, and they're not even in the same group, so it's better to score than miss on purpose. Anyway, as for Griezmann, it looked like it was pretty easy work for him, and he was probably more interested in getting Samuel Umtiti to put in a good word for him at Barcelona. Now, next up is a rather unknown player, not only because he plays for the lesser fancied Israel in international competitions, but also because he plays in China, so he's not exactly on the tip of everyone's tongue. Nevertheless, 31-year-old Aaron Zahavi was on absolute fire over the international break, scoring Israel's goal that saw them take a point against Slovenia before bagging a hat-trick in a 4-2 victory over Austria, which actually leaves Israel second in Group G. So now, finally, we come to our top two, where as normal with every single power ranking, I'll make a case for both before 
four, finally revealing the winner at the end of the show. So first up, and there's Kylian Mbappe. He's actually the third French player on this list, although we could have had many more. If I'd have put N'Golo Kante and Samuel Mtiti in there as well, well, it just would have been a bit harsh on everyone else. I'm trying to keep things interesting. As for Kylian Mbappe, though, he managed to get on the score sheet against Moldova before absolutely tearing Iceland apart. His skill and brilliant running all night was a danger to the Icelandic defence. He managed to end the evening with two assists and a goal. And if you look at the likes of him, Dembele, Giroud and Griezmann, surely France have to be favourites for the whole tournament next summer. The other player vying for the number one spot this week is someone who's managed to take his club form into the international scene. And England will have Pep Guardiola to thank for the tutelage that he has given to Raheem Sterling, who has come on leaps and bounds since joining Manchester City. He's now scoring and assisting regularly for the Sky Blues, and he took that form into the international break, as I've just mentioned. He managed to bag a hat-trick against Czech Republic before scoring and assisting away at Montenegro. He managed to pick up the Man of the Match award in both games whilst dealing incredibly well with reports of racial abuse. This has absolutely no place on any football field or anywhere in society, so to see Raheem Sterling, or any other player for that matter, doing the talking with his feet is absolutely brilliant. So before I reveal the winner, guys, let me know all your thoughts down below. It's a little bit different to our European power rankings, but of course, club football is back at the weekend. So for the international power rankings, who would you have had in the top 10? Who would have been your number one, number two, and number three? And were there any surprises that you didn't see on this list. Of course, you can also smash the like button whilst you're down there and click here or here to check out all of the other videos that we've got going on on OneFootball. So, without any further ado, in second place this week was Kylian Mbappe, meaning that Raheem Sterling, for his fantastic performances, takes the number one spot. Until next time, I will see you guys later.